It is good to have you with us. No matter where you might be scattered throughout the world, no matter what the conditions of your life might be, it is good to have you in the very presence of God. And so it is our prayer that on this day, this particular day, this day of Pentecost, when we celebrate the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the equipping of the Holy Spirit, the capacity of the Holy Spirit to enable us to hear the good news of the, of the gospel. So come, come gather with us as, as we praise God and as we sing the songs of faith, as we allow God to enter into our own life and our own experience and our own histories and lead us to that place where God would have us be. So may this time together be a time when, when our Lord lays hands upon you and gives you a blessing. May it be a time when we together can share what it means to be children of God and heirs of the kingdom. May it be a time when we hear anew and afresh what it means to be children of God, disciples of Jesus Christ, heirs of the kingdom. Come. Let us praise God. Let us feel the hand of God's touch upon us.
Acts 2, 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they ask, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowds. Fellow Jews and all of you who are in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you supposed. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show you wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I invite you now to prayer a time of opening our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the very power and presence of God moving among us. You see, God is always moving out. God is always moving in us. God is always seeking to communicate with us. And in our prayer, we open ourselves to that experience. And in those moments, we lift up our hearts. We praise God for all that God has done for the blessings that we have received, for the way that God has worked in our life. But it's also a time for us to bring before our Lord those who are in need of a special touch, of God's touching them in a way that they might be healed, or that they might be comforted, or that they might be reassured, or that they might even hear new directions in their life. So we come lifting up others, lifting up those who are broken and those who are seeking. Let us pray together. God of grace, you sent the promised gift of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and the women, upon Mary, the mother of Jesus, and upon his brothers. Fill your church with power, kindle flaming hearts within us, and cause us to proclaim your mighty works in every tongue that all may call on you and be saved. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray together. Most gracious, most loving, most powerful God, we give you thanks on this Pentecost Sunday for the arrival of your Holy Spirit, for that presence which teaches us, encourages us, empowers us, and leads us to that life that will enable us to proclaim your good news to a broken world. All this we would pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the loneliest places in the world is to be surrounded by people who do not speak your language, nor do you understand theirs. Clearly, our world has changed in that regard, has it not? It has not been too long ago that we were a culture of primarily English-speaking people, where other languages were quite rare. Today, though, we can hear different languages spoken at McDonald's, at the gas station, at the grocery store. My latest statistics from the Board of Education shares with me that there are 15 different language groups that are being spoken in our county schools. With a high degree of migration, a movement around the world, different languages are going to emerge, different cultures are going to emerge, different ways of thinking, different ideas. And, and clearly for many, this is troubling. It is not the way it used to be. While others, though, will find the situation isolating, finding it difficult and challenging. However, I suggest to you that in this changing environment, we can understand fully and completely, at least more completely, the meaning and power behind the events of Pentecost in the first century of the church. You see, that culture, while diverse, was limited in its diversity. There were two basic language groups being spoken. One of those was Aramaic, the language of the common people. The other was Hebrew, the language that was primarily spoken by the priest and those who surrounded the temple community. However, on the day of Pentecost, a festival, one of the three temple festivals that brought together God-fearing Jews from around the world, brought the streets of Jerusalem alive with the noise of numerous languages. The author of this text, St. Luke, he wants us to understand two things, two things about this crowd. He calls them God-fearers. Now, this is a specific term that was used to describe those from around the world who had converted to the religious experience of Judaism but were not ethnic Jews. They were people from their homeland. They were people from different cultures. They were people from different languages. But they had embraced in greater or lesser degree the teachings of the Torah. And so they were known as God-fearers. Luke goes on in great lengths uh, to share the many names of countries uh, which are often difficult for us to pronounce. Those who are coming from Rome and from Greece, from North Africa, from different sections of modern day Iraq and regions east of Jerusalem. He wants us to have a worldview, to understand this community as people who are coming from around the world with different ideas, different cultures, and different languages. It's important that we understand 
that community. It's important that we understand that mixed culture. He is wanting us to see the profoundly different ways in which these people came together to come together to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Now, we can imagine, I think, that there was a lot of, of gesturing, of pointing, of seeking somebody who could help you interpret because communication would have been challenging and difficult. I can identify with that in two different settings that I'm going to share with you. One of them is for a number of years I led groups to the United States-Mexican border, Nogales, Arizona, and Nogales, Sonora, Mexico. It was a program designed to enable us to understand migration out of Central America across the border into the United States. To meet, to meet with those who had made that long journey, to listen to their stories, and to seek to understand more fully what motivated them to come to our land. Most of them did not speak English. And most of our group did not speak Spanish. But the saving grace for us was one of our members, Nancy. Nancy Ryan, Spanish teacher at Hedgesville High School for a number of years. Nancy became our interpreter. She helped us in restaurants to work our way through menus. Uh, she helped us to be guided to where the bathrooms were. She guided us in those places where we did not fully understand the language or the directions that were being offered. Nancy was an invaluable resource, especially on one occasion when I was driving the van and I went the wrong way on a one-way street only to be met by one of the local policemen. It was Nancy who was able to negotiate with the police while the teenagers in the back of the van were in uproarious laughter as they were watching me squirm to find out what would happen next. Nancy was that glue that helped us to understand languages in a place and world where we did not understand. In 2015, I was the guest pre or professor at Union Theological Seminary in Manila community called Cavite. The seminary where I was working was a joint project between the Board of Global Ministries of the United Methodist Church and the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. They came together to create a program to educate Filipino men and women in order that they could become pastors in their homeland. Now, the faculty and the primary language of the seminary was English. But most of the students who came were from all over the Philippines and they spoke a variety of different languages. Some of those speaking did not understand what was being said by their classmates. There were 12 different language groups being spoken on the campus while I was there. there. There was one day when there was a group of us, about eight or ten, and they were trying to converse with me and having great difficulty with my language and mine with theirs. And we struggled not only with their language to me, but with each other, because they often did not understand one another. We were rescued by Dr. L.A. Fernandez, the president of the seminary, who spoke three of the languages, who came along and helped to interpret and guide us through the conversation. You may have your own illustrations of those moments where you were isolated or alone because of language, or perhaps because of cultural barriers. 
they represent for us the confusion created at the Tower of Babel, where we've been babbling at one another for over thousands of years now. Too often we talk, but we are not heard. Too often we speak, but others do not understand. Too often we express our thoughts, but others do not feel included. There are even those times when we are absolutely eloquent, but others do not feel accepted. We live in a world of noise, but still too often feel isolated and alone. It is for that reason, for this particular reason, that God gave us the Pentecost experience. It, it's not an event that teaches one to speak a language other than your native tongue. It, it's not an emotional, passionate, quote, speaking in tongues as we find by described by the Apostle Paul in, in 1 Corinthians. Pentecost is about communicating so that others might hear, might understand, might feel included, might believe that they are accepted, being known that they are loved. Now, it's profoundly significant that the gift of Pentecost is given to the church, not to individuals. The Holy Spirit descended on a gathered community. And it is that community that is empowered to proclaim the good news. It is the church. In these days of dwindling participation in the life of the church, in an environment where the ministries of the church are not always accepted or embraced, I fear that we are facing judgment. Does the larger world, in all its diversity, not hear a word of acceptance from us? Does the world not experience understanding from us? Does the culture believe they are not important to those of us in the body of the church. Do they not feel loved? This diverse community gathered at Pentecost in Jerusalem on that day, coming from all the corners of the known world, speaking different languages, expressing different cultures, hearing words of acceptance hearing words of love and understanding from the Galilean community whom they thought were really unable to share such profound gifts. This is the purpose and the power of Pentecost, the hearing of God's good news of acceptance, of forgiveness, love, it's the gift of empowerment to the church, the living body of Christ in the world. It's the gift of empowerment to us. It's the gift of a spirit-filled message to the world, to the troubled, to the lonely, to those who feel rejected, to those who feel excluded. In my days in the Philippines, I taught in English and on one occasion, there was a bit of uprising from one of my classes that they were having difficulty carrying out the assignments that I had given them to share their story, their story of ministry, their story of call to the whole of the class. I asked them to do that in English, in my language. And it was there that they rebelled and said, we can tell the story, but we've got to tell it in our own language. And so we finally compromised to find that there needed to be an interpreter for me so that I could hear their story. I could understand what they were saying. 
I could understand what they were sharing. It's important to the church and to the churches that we capture this full meaning of Pentecost as an ongoing, ever-present revelation of God's work among us. Just as at creation, God formed us, breathed into us the breath of life, and set us on a course of companionship with himself. Or just as at the birth of Jesus the Christ at the Nativity, where God enters into our presence in the presence of an infant child. Or just at Easter Day, when we experience revelation in an experience and world and kind of style that we do not fully comprehend. It is God entering into our presence, God making self known. Pentecost, Pentecost is a moment of God's entering, equipping, enabling the church and the churches to witness to a message of love and unity and acceptance. Like that first Pentecost, let this be a day when a diverse world hears from us an accepting, inclusive word of love. Let this be a day when we too experience the remarkable power of God to translate our own mixed voices into a harmonious message of the redeeming and restoring and accepting love of God. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter your history, let the power of Pentecost use our voices to tell the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that moment of redeeming, restoring, transforming love that embraces us all. Amen. I know the edges of my soul I know I'm not all you want me to be. Take this heart all sharp and hard and ragged. Let your grace and love wash over me. Like water wears a stone smooth For me to be more like you Shape my soul with your truth Like water wears a stone smooth Cover me with grace and make me holy as I live and grow. Let your flood of goodness rush around me. Give me faith as you let your will flow. Like water wears a stone
like water wears a stone We are so richly blessed. One of the experiences of worship, authentic worship, is to discover once again how it is that God has touched us, blessed us, redeemed us, restored us. And we can do no other than say thanks be to God, praising God for all that God has done. But it's also a time for us to give. So I invite you to give your gifts your tithes, your offerings, as expressions of our love and care for the one who has so loved us. Our generosity offered to the one who has been so generous to us. Let us now give our offerings. It has been a joy to have you with us today, and it is our prayer that you have been touched by the power of God, that you have felt the nudge of the Spirit, you have felt the presence of the Son, and that God's love has surrounded you in special and powerful kind of ways, especially on this Pentecost Sunday, a day when we acknowledge, celebrate, proclaim, the coming of the Holy Spirit into the life of the church. May that spirit extend to you too, a 
and you feel that power and you hear the good news. And now I encourage you to go forth into the world in peace. In the name of the God who has loved you and created you and breathed life into you. In the name of the Son who has lived among us and healed us, taught us, died for us, rose again for us. In the name of the Spirit, that Spirit that has descended upon us, empowering us. Go now in the name of God, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and give witness to all that God has done and is doing in your life to all that would hear you, all that would experience you, all that would know you. Amen. Seal it for thy courts of God.